Lovely. So, uh, yeah, so oh, uh, season 23, I think, is out end of September, I think. Yeah. 23rd of September or something. I think so. And, uh, yeah, there was an interesting thing there that Philip uh, was, Philip was quite, uh, Philip was quite poorly on, on the week that we ended up shooting. Uh, so Philip was going to come and join us in the pub. And uh, at the last minute, we realised that wouldn't be possible. And uh, and so I said, let's do satellite link up. But we also sent a cameraman to his house. So there's a, so we have like a second unit going on. Uh, he's, he's up in like above Manchester somewhere, I think. And uh, and and so it's the first thing that we had where there's two units kind of going on in order to make sure it's not just a face on the screen, but you actually get get Philip and Lord in there and so on. I mean, how do you, I mean, what, what works really well is your flammable observational approach. I mean, how do you go about uh, putting those special features together? Do you pitch ideas or Yeah. Dogs? One thing you realise when you watch them back when I was editing them, I was like, have I got some kind of problem? But they all seem to take place with people drinking and eating. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of booze That's in, all things, in yeah. my documentaries. It's very strange. Uh, no, we, we, it depends a bit, really. And we, it tends to begin with... Russell Minton as boss kind of saying this is the season that's coming next. What can you pitch? And I will pitch three, four documentaries that I think would be a really nice fit for that. Uh, and then I send him uh, a kind of breakdown of this is what I think it will be like, and this is the budget and the practical side of things. And and normally, hopefully, it's a nice smooth process where um, that gets signed off and then and then it's about approaching the people that you want to have involved. So normally I think the Doctor Who fraternity, if you like, the, the actors and, and crew from the show are very good to us and very and very open to us taking them on these strange adventures. So when you're trying to explain to, say, Colin and Nicola what Doctor Who cookbook's going to be and that, that Nicola were going to have to come and film it in your kitchen and, you know, these are strange conversations to be having uh, when you're trying to say, it's going to be great, but it's going to be you making something really horrible in the 80s and then in your own kitchen, it's going to be great. And, you know, that, that takes a bit of explaining, but I think that... Uh, it's always been it's always been really fun the way people have opened themselves up to it. And I think talking to people in the green room, I think they all enjoy the kind of fun side that we're that we're trying to get at. Uh, and we certainly I certainly like to try and do the ones where we can get a few cameras going, so you do get something a bit more natural. Like, but a doctor's cookbook, you really turn up the, uh, on doctor's table, you really do learn a lot of new things about those people yeah. by just letting them get on with it and not messing about. To them. See the events unfold. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest document to tackle with so far? The biggest one? Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know if this is a leading question, but we, uh, we, we're just finishing our longest, our biggest one that we've ever done, which is, uh, at the moment, it might change a little bit, but it's 82 minutes long, and so so Ed Strandling has done those kind of bigger, longer docs before. I've not really, I've, all mine, I quite like a nice pacey, sharp doc, and so mine tend to not be longer than about about 45, 50 minutes. But this new one is a real beast, it's a big 82 minute, and it's been the biggest undertaking I think we've ever had. It's got, uh, it's got 18 interviewees in it. And wow. it's really, I, I, you'll find out what it is in, in, in a short time, I think. Uh, but it, I can't say anything more today, but it will be a real beast, and I'm really proud of it. I think it's really uh, strong. So, so that's the biggest one. Uh, the, the Can't wait to see that. I mean, it's so great out having this collection. Well, and that's the interesting that the stuff that we've done that you've seen there is us trying to be, is us having fun. Yeah. And I think then the, the feature length one is very much a piece of archaeology as well. It's a very kind of solid, meaty, uh, smart documentary like that. So it's, it, I, I think we can play in different sound bits, you know, try different genres. And, and topics, and that, that makes it a more interesting range, I think, to Israel. Fabulous. And now, Jane, similar with Ron, uh, like recreating a uh, you know, classic Doctor Who, you, were, you and your mind dad were involved in making the mission to the unknown. Yes, we were. Um, and also the, the, the producers in the audience as well. That's right there, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Ireland, Ireland um, with the University of Central Lancashire. Oh. <laughs> With the University of Central Lancashire, they, they decided to, to get the students involved remaking Mission to the Unknown. Um, as we all know, it's a missing Dalek story, and, and one of the ones that wasn't quite so widely spread. So, so the chances of getting it back are fairly limited. We're always hopeful, but it's, it's fairly limited. Um, and also, because it doesn't have the main cast, that makes it ideal 
to, to, to recast it without quite so much friction for, for people familiar with it. But yes, um, there was a, a request put out on various forums and social media saying, does anyone have a, a 60s era Dalek that they could lend out to the production? And as it happened, we had one, we saw the message and we got in touch. Um, we were expecting it to be absolutely flooded with Daleks, because there were quite a lot on the circuit, um, but for reasons of geography and availability and um, just, just generally what was available at the time um, about the project, not many others turned up. We, we had a few, but um, we ended up having a much bigger role in it than, than we were expecting to. I mean, we thought it would be a background one, but, um, but no. Do you think uh, it will ever be released if we get to see it? Because you've seen it. I've seen it, yeah, 12 times. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know Peter Pillars is keen to get it out there. We all are, we yeah. all are. And uh, it's it's looking pretty hopeful that it will get out there. Um, I put, <laughs> someone just said, oh, wow. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's, it's, tr it's true. Um, obviously, I can't speak on the behalf of the the BBC or you clan because I'm not with I wasn't with the university um, but yes it, it's looking very hopeful that people are going to be able to see it and, and I think they should because it's, it's a good piece of work the original was a very good episode it's, it's one of the grimmest uh, Dalek stories of them all yeah it's very dark I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe and not spoil it in case people here haven't seen it on daily motion but um, <laughs> yeah it's it was a, a very dark one to, to attempt. And also, just very quickly, I mean, you're a marvellous monster maker as well. I mean, there's some of your things on the table. Oh, yeah. Uh, your work was also in Series 11, The Smoker Box. It was. I'm surprised you knew that. I did my research. Uh, did you... Uh, how did you get involved with that? What was the process of making? Um, well, <laughs> because I, I've been making monsters for a few years now, um, just mostly for fun. It started out making the Dalek that incidentally ended up in Mission to the Unknown. Um, and then I got into sculpting, and that's what I'm really interested in doing. Um, doing that and posting it online, you get to know people. And you, um, I became friends with a very, very talented um, costume and monster maker called Rob Allsop, who's been doing Doctor Who monsters since the McCoy era. Um, and I said, could I come up to, to London for a, a couple of weeks and do it? And yeah, it was, as it happened, they had a lot on for that series. And um, yeah, out of, out of the three Doctor Who productions I've done, that's the only one that's now out. So um, I, I can talk about it at last. Yeah. Well, it's amazing to have your credit on the screen. Though. It must feel amazing to work, up, you know, work on a show that we grew up and be inspired by. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Certainly when it's in the, the 60s font. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> I grew up watching Doctor Who on VHS from the 60s. I, I, one of my earliest mem I, I know I, I started watching um, with an unearthly child on UK Gold, but um, one of my earliest memories of actually watching it was, um, I don't know if anyone here remembers the William Hartnell 3 VHS set that came out. And it had the sensor rights, oh, time yeah, meddler and gunfighters. Yeah. Early 2000s. I watched that to pieces. Uh, one of the one of the VHSs, I, I wouldn't have thrown it out, but I can't find it. I think it just dissolved to dust in the VHS <laughs> player from overuse. Do you know, I'm really sorry, but that has flown by. I'm afraid we're all out of time. But, I mean, thank you all for coming. I really enjoyed that. And thanks for showing us. <laughs> One more time, please. Thank you, Robert. Keith, Chris Chapman, and James Perkins. Now, before we draw the raffle, uh, those of you who are here.